As we look at this passage in James chapter 2 this morning, uh, keep it in mind, he's not contradicting that truth. We are saved by grace through faith. Uh, but works is not in order to be saved, but there are works that are a product of salvation, a fruit of salvation. We began talking about that last week and looking at uh, focusing our attention on the, uh, the unreal faith that he is describing here uh, in James chapter 2. And this morning we're going to uh, flip the coin and look at the real faith that he is describing here in James chapter 2, uh, beginning in verse 14, where he says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith or can that type of faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and the by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Last week we looked at that unreal faith and we talked about how there, there, is an, there are really many unreal faiths, but there is an unreal faith that is a non-saving faith, a no good faith, a dead faith, a demonic faith, a useless faith. A faith. Now the problem is, is that there are many faiths that are out there. there. There are many things that people say they believe, and there are many things that people do believe in. There are other religions, and even under the umbrella of what we might call Christianity, there are folks that believe different things about Jesus and, and different things about what G living for Jesus should look like. There, there are many faiths, but the reality is, and what he's talking about here, there's only one real faith. Only one real faith. You know, I was, uh, when we were reading through in the, in the Gospel of Mark and uh, uh, this week in our engaged Bible reading, it was talking about when Jesus came into the, uh, the Jerusalem there and rode in on that donkey and how everybody was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. And the word Hosanna means Lord save. And, and as they were saying that, I'm sure that the people there were believing what they were saying. But the reality is, is they, they wanted Jesus to save them, but they only wanted Jesus to save them from Rome. Jesus was coming to save them from themselves. That's, that's our problem, is ourselves. And, and Jesus, and, and, and real faith saves us from ourselves. That's the problem with, with some of the, uh, what we might call Christian faith today, some of the unreal faith, is that there are people who want to be saved from the punishment of sin today, but don't want to be saved from themselves. They, they, want to be, they don't want to go to hell, but they want to live life however their flesh and self want to. And that's what James is saying. He's saying that's not a real faith. You may believe the fact that Jesus died on the cross, but the demons believe and tremble. That's no better than them. Real faith is, involves a, a giving of ourselves completely to the Lord. Real salvation is a dying of ourselves. It is death to ourselves, and the life of Jesus Christ takes over. That's the supernatural transaction of being born again when a person is saved. 
So we talked a little bit about that, and I want to before we get into the describing the real faith or looking how James describes the real faith here. We need to have that true understanding of, of what real faith is. And I'm not going to repeat everything I said last week, but you, you understand here it's important that we, because there are a lot of things that are said here in James that if you take out of context can lead you down a wrong street. And Context is important with, with all of the Bible, but especially here in James chapter 2 that we, we keep what he says here in the context of, of what he is saying and talking about the real faith and the unreal faith that is here and also in the context of the Bible as a whole and what Jesus taught. And James is certainly not contradicting what Jesus taught and he's not contradicting what the Holy Spirit taught through the Apostle Paul as well. It all works together when you understand it in its in its proper content. And remember this, that, that the, the true equation, it's not, it's not that faith minus works equals salvation. And it's not works minus faith equals salvation. And it's not even works plus faith equals salvation. We're saved by grace through faith. Not of, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so it's not faith plus works equals salvation. The proper equation is what we looked at last week, and that is faith equals salvation, which equals works. That, that's what we're talking about. Now, understand, when we're talking about faith, what we, when you see that word faith there, the, what you ought to, the, the word that ought to come to mind is relationship. Because that's what biblical faith is. It is relationship. It's not just a head knowledge. It's not just a, 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 a agreeing with a certain set of, 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 of doctrine or a certain set of truths. It is, it is a relationship with the unseen God. It is entering into relationship with Him. It is a, a yes, a, 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 for lack of better terminology, it is a belief, but it is a belief that He is real that enters you into a relationship with what is unseen. That's what, when you see the word faith in the Bible, you ought to, one of the words, probably the first word that ought to pop into your head or that you need to pop into your head is relationship. That's what he's talking about. It's not a set of beliefs or what we believe. It is who we believe in. That's what makes saving faith. Belief Without relationship is unreal belief. It is unreal faith. True belief comes from a real relationship with God. So when we say faith, we're talking about relationship with Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's what we mean by faith. And so what do we mean by salvation? Well, we're not just talking about going to heaven when you die. That is a result of salvation. But when you see the word salvation, think life. It is a life relationship with Jesus. This relationship with Jesus that gives us life, gives us spiritual life, gives us abundant life, and yes, gives us eternal life. It is the life of this relationship with him. That's what it means to be saved. That's what salvation is. I'm entering into and I'm living out of this relationship with God. He is a part of my life every day. He is leading me. He's empowering me. He's equipping in me. He is real to me. He speaks to me. He guides me. He convicts me. He directs me. That is who, it's this relationship with Jesus Christ. And when you have that type of relationship, then there are works that will come. And as you think of works, think of this word, fruit. It is the byproduct. It is the fruit of this life with Jesus. It is the fruit of this life that is lived every day. It is him and his life flowing through me. That's what the works are. It's not me doing things for him. It's him doing things through me. That's Christianity. 
That, that is what it means to be saved. We enter into this relationship with God where we repent of our sins and we bow the knee to Jesus Christ. He comes in. There's a supernatural transaction that takes place. I'm born again and I have his life within me in the presence of the Holy Spirit and he in me. It's not, I have to grow and learn how to do this, but as I'm growing and learning and he's leading and he's guiding and he's encouraging and equipping and, and correcting in my life, then and all of a sudden, things begin to come out of my life that look like Jesus because it is Jesus. It's Jesus working in me. That's what we're talking about. Relationship equals life equals fruit. That's a true understanding of real salvation. It is life-changing and when this transaction takes place in the soul and the heart of the man, nothing can get it out. Nothing can change. Nothing can separate us from the presence of Christ, from the love of Christ that is in our lives and in our hearts. So that's, that's what we mean by by salvation. And, and so as you understand that, and understand that's, that's what he's talking about here and, and putting together what Paul teaches and what Jesus teaches about salvation, we understand this is, this is what they're talking about. And so this is that real faith that leads to a real salvation that produces real fruit in our lives. What does it look like? Well, notice how he describes it here in these verses. First of all, Real faith shows. This real relationship with, remember we said, when we're talking about faith, don't go back on me and start thinking about believing certain facts. And th now there are certain facts and, and we need to believe it as we enter into this relationship. But that's not what we're talking about is relationship. This relationship, this faith relationship with Jesus, it shows in our life. Look at what he says there in verse 18. He says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. He says, show me your faith without your works, which if you show a faith without works, without any fruit, it's not a real faith. We talked about that last week. But then he says, and I will show you my faith by my works. What is he saying here? He's saying real faith shows. It shows out and it shows up. It shows. It shows. That word show, it means that it, it exposes it to the eyes. It is visible proof of an invisible transaction and change that has taken place. That's what he is saying here. See, there will always be visible proof of real faith. There will be fruit that comes from that. Now, sometimes it takes a while for the fruit to start coming, but there will be Fruit. Fruit will come from that. What is faith? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. That's what the uh, Hebrews talks about uh, there. It is this unseen work by an unseen God. But this unseen work by this unseen God produces fruit that is visible. That is visible. And the fruit that we're talking about will look like Jesus. It is a life. It is, remember, relationship, life, fruit. Fruit comes from the life, not our life, not our life of trying to do better. Trying to do better doesn't work. We need the better one to take over and produce his fruit in us. That's what he talks about, abiding in Christ like a vine in the branches. The branch does not produce the fruit. The vine produces the fruit through the branch. And so it produces this fruit, and the fruit is from the branch, I mean from the vine, which is Jesus. It will look like Jesus. It will love like Jesus. It will have humility like Jesus. It will sacrifice like Jesus. It will serve like Jesus. It will live a life of purity like Jesus. It will have power like Jesus. Why? Because it is Jesus. It is his life lived out through us. And so, real life shows. It shows. It shows like Jesus. Secondly, real faith 
justifies. Real faith justifies. Now, notice what he says here in verse 21, talking about Abraham, and we'll mention more about him in just a second here. He says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? And then he says again in verse 24, he says, You see then that man is justified by works and not by faith only. And then he says again in verse 25 about Rahab, she said, Also just uh, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messenger and sent them out another way? Now, here's why I'm talking about taking things out of context. You can say, well, then we're justified by doing works, so do works so that you can experience justification. No, 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 no. You're taking it out of context here. He's not saying, do this and you will be justified. What he is saying, he says, Works are produced out of someone who has been justified. That's, that's the equation that we were talking about that was up there on the screen. And that, that is what he's, he's teaching here. We're not, not that we're saved by works. We're not. No man can boast that he is saved by his works. Our works do not justify. It is the faith that is within us. And, and it is this relationship with God that brings justification within us. But that justification will, will be shown out as in righteous works and, and works that glorify Jesus. The word justify, it means to be declared righteous. That is a work that God does based upon what Jesus did for us. Not our works, but his work. He declares us righteous when, because of the work that Jesus did for us and our surrender to him. Jesus, the one who did the righteous work for us, comes to live within us and we are declared righteous. We are given his righteousness because our righteousness is as filthy rags and whatever works we try to do in the flesh, in our own power, will never measure up. It'll be wood, hay, and stubble. The only thing that survives the fire of judgment, the fire of, of, of testing in our lives is the work of Jesus himself. And he gives us his righteousness. And when he declares us righteous and Jesus gives us his righteousness, then we are shown righteous. That's what the word justified means. When we talk about the word justify means just as if I never sinned. And what does that mean, just as if I never sinned? Does that mean that I'm perfect? No, what it means is if I had never sinned, I would have never been separated from God and I'd have a relationship with him. Just as if I've never sinned means now that sin has been removed, that barrier has been removed, everything that has separated me from God has been taken out of my life and I can have relationship with him. The veil has been rent and he is my righteousness. He is my Lord. He is my redeemer his blood is what cleanses me from all sin it is him 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 it's him we are shown righteous through the gracious gift of Jesus and all that could be done for us was fulfilled by Jesus and everything we ever need to stand before God, to have a relationship with God has been given to us in Jesus. And you say, well, what about, as he's talking about Abraham and Rahab here, how does that work? It says there in verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works, faith was made perfect as the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham worked for God. And it was, no, it doesn't say that. It said Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called what? The friend of God. There's relationship. So what is he saying here? What Abraham did with Isaac showed who he knew. He wasn't doing a work to try to please God. He was doing a work because he knew God. He trusted God. 
even to do this unreasonable thing. He knew God. He had a relationship with God. He was a friend of God. He knew God. And he knew that even though God was telling him to do something that didn't make sense, he could trust God. He knew he could trust God. And he also knew that God was able to, that if, if Isaac was put to death, he could raise him up from the dead. He knew God. That's the reason he did this. He wasn't doing it to try to perform or try to prove anything to God or anything. He did it because he already knew God. He knew God. How does your relationship with God affect how you live? Relationship equals salvation, equals life, equals fruit in our lives. Same with Rahab. Now we don't have as much history of her where it says there in verse 25, likewise was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. What it's talking about is when Joshua went into Jericho, when he sent spies into Jericho to scout it out and they ended up at Rahab's house and Rahab hid them away and let them go and she said, I, I as I do this, I only ask one thing of you, and that is when you, and I've heard about your God, and when you and your people come, would you and your God save me and my family? See, she didn't have the history with God that Abraham had, but what she heard about this God of the Israelites and what he had done, she said, I want him to be my God. And she believed in him. She believed that he would be merciful to her. She believed that he would be gracious to her. She believed that if she cried out to him, he would, would save her and, and take care of her. And she knew that he would give the victory over Jericho. They had the power to do that. But she, she was beginning to know him. And so she, said, she reached out in faith, faith out of this relationship with, with this God that she had heard about. And she said, I believe in him. I believe in him. Now take care of me her heart wanted this God that she heard about and as her heart reached out in confession and in need and in desperation the heart of the grace and mercy of God reached down and saved her real faith justifies and by justify I mean it changes everything Third truth, real faith is active. It's active there in verse 22. He says, do you see that faith was working together with his works? Working together. That word work means that it's, they are at work. They are active. They are productive. They are effective. That the faith and works, this, this relationship and this life are coming together and producing a work, producing energy, producing something effective, something that, 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 that really works. And notice it says they, they work together. They are the word together. It means that they are engaged. They, have, they, have, they are a cemented together. They're married together. This, this, this faith and this, this, this works, this relationship and this fruit, they are, they are coming together. In other words, real faith is engaged with real activity. You cannot separate them. You cannot say, I've got faith, but, but I don't, I'm not going to worry about any fruit. I'm going to live fruit of the flesh and fruit of, of sin, and, and that's the fruit that's produced in my life. No, they're, they're connected together. They're cemented together, and, and real faith is engaged with real activity and real uh, relationship uh, that produces this real life, will produce this real fruit in our lives. You cannot separate this, this faith, this relationship, this life with this, this Jesus. When he is in our lives, he is working in us. He's changing us. He's conforming us. We're not perfect. We make mistakes, but Jesus is in there working through our mistakes, teaching us, growing us, maturing us in 
our walk, in our life. He's doing this work in us. He's conforming us into the image of Christ because it is Christ who lives within us. Jesus is doing this in our lives. And then as he's doing this in our lives, he begins to produce things through us that, that ministers to others, that, that leads us to serve others, that leads us to show the love of God to others in a way that they, they see it and something spiritual and supernatural is taking a place. It's not just physical effort. It's supernatural work taking place in us and through us. Heard the story about the logger many years back who was a, a great logger, and he did it old school. He used the axe and could cut down those trees and could cut down more trees than anybody could with an axe. And, of course, technology was catching up and passing him by, and people were working with chainsaws, but he was still working with that axe and everything. And, and so uh, someone told him that he needed to catch up with the times, and if he caught a, got a chainsaw, he could do a lot better work. So he finally gave in and, and went down and decided to buy him a chainsaw and asked him about the chainsaw. And he said, uh, the guy that was selling the chainsaw said, I guarantee you that if you use this chainsaw, you can, you, you can cut down twice as many trees as you can with that, that axe, if not more. I guarantee you. They said, you guarantee? He said, if, it doesn't, if you can't cut down twice as many or more trees with this, then you bring that chainsaw back to me. And he said, all right, I'll do it. He said, now I can cut down, I don't remember what the amount was, but let's just say 25 trees a day and stuff. He said, well, you can do 50 with this chainsaw. I guarantee it. And so he went out and he worked and after doing it a few days, comes back, brings the chainsaw back. He says, you guaranteed it would it cut down twice as many trees. No way, no way. I said, I used to cut down 25. Now I can cut down 30, but it's not twice as many and stuff like that. And he says, Really? He says, well, that's, that's amazing. He looked at the chainsaw, made sure the chain was on correctly and stuff like that. He said, well, let me see it here. And he cranked that thing up. And, and that guy says, what's that noise? <laughs> see, many of us, we're going at this Christian life with a chainsaw that's not cranked. Jesus is the fuel. Jesus is the life. And this, he's the one that produces the fruit. He's the one that does the work in and through us. It's like Agent Rogers used to talk about, you know, going to the Mercedes dealership and buying a brand new Mercedes with all the bells and whistles and looking, you know, so stylish and stuff like that and then pushing it off the lot and pushing it home. Quit pushing the car, get in and crank it up. Because let me tell you, when the, the faith, the relationship with Christ that produces this life-changing work within us, when it is activated, it produces God-glorifying fruit in our lives. Real faith is active. Real faith completes. He says in the last part of verse 22, it says, do you see that faith was working together with his works? It says, and by works, faith was made perfect. Doesn't mean that he had a perfect life, Abraham or us, as far as that goes. But that word perfect, made perfect, it means it was carried through completely to producing fruit that honors and glorifies God. In other words, when you have this relationship, you never stop being in relationship and it continues to work in your life. Real faith never stops working. It carries it to completion. It carries us through. We never lose this relationship with Jesus. We never get out of this relationship with Jesus. Oh, sometimes we don't walk in it like we should. Sometimes we're not listening to Jesus like we should. Sometimes we're not depending on Jesus like we should. But we still got this relationship and he convicts us when we don't. And he corrects those things in our lives and he encourages us. And he lifts us up and he, and he, he gives us the direction that, that we need. We can't get out of this relationship. He he continues to work and he continues to work even when we fail he, he, he lifts us up and carries us and, and helps us to overcome those failures in our life even when we, we have those mountaintop experiences we never stop living for Jesus because Jesus is living in us 
That's what he's talking about. That's the way real faith is. It is a real relationship that produces real life, that bears real fruit to the glory of God. And then finally, real faith counts. Verse 23 says, And the scripture was fulfilled. By the way, all scripture will be and is fulfilled. Which says, Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Do you see there is putting it in the proper perspective. There is faith that equals salvation. That equals works. That equals fruit. He says it was accounted to him as righteousness. That word accounted, it's an accounting term. And it just means like it's, it's, it's listed down. It's calculated. It's, it's numbered. It, is, it deals with reality. That's what he's saying. It's something tangible. It's something that you can experience, that you do experience. It's something that was real in Abraham's life. And it's something that that, that same faith should be real in our lives as well. Because Jesus is real. And because his work is real. Because real faith really really does work. It really does. Will we be tempted? Yes. Will we sin? Yes. Will we have doubts from time to time? Yes. But we can't get out of this relationship. We will not get out of this relationship. And God works through our sin. God works through our temptation. He works through our failures. He works through our doubts. And he continues to grow us and, and, and work in our lives to produce this fruit out of our lives. Jesus keeps working. He keeps changing. He keeps drawing. He keeps cleansing. He keeps forgiving. He keeps changing. He keeps using. He keeps working in us and through us. So real faith really works. So it all comes down to this. Are you in a relationship with Jesus Christ? Is he your Lord and your Savior? And a real relationship with a real Jesus produces the life of Jesus, brings us into the life of Jesus, and produces fruit like Jesus that gives honor and glory to Jesus. That's the Christian life. It's not agreeing with a set of principles or a list of doctrines. It is entering into relationship with Jesus that spiritually transforms your life. Many of you have this testimony of being religious, maybe even being raised in church and hearing all the right truth, but then all of a sudden, bam, spiritual transformation. Things changed in our lives. That's called salvation. And that's what we need. And I'm here to tell you, it is real. Real. So, let's get real this morning.